Hi there, welcome back to the spot. It's time now for us to meet our guest of the day. He is a radio personality, um, a uh, programs director mm. at City FM, and also a media somebody. Yes. That's what he said. <laughs> yes. It's Oscar Oyiso. Did Ooh, I say that right? Yes. yes, you did. Yes, you did. Hi. I'm about to do high five. High five. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you basically <laughs> followed you followed the missus onto the show. Uh yeah. You saw oh, that she was here. She looked and then familiar you were last like, week. I was like, yeah. I, I know that woman. I kind of wake up beside her it's every good day. That you know her. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, how are you guys doing? Good. 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 Ah, okay. I'm being interviewed. Sorry. I'm used to. <laughs> I'm used to having the mic. So tell what us about the Oscar the on the radio. Uh, whew, uh, twelve years so far. Uh, three stations and still loving it uh ra- radio is fun mm-hmm. i mean there's no makeup involved <laughs> no sound Sometimes check no bathing no ba- oh, as a <laughs> you have to wear fine cloth <laughs> no um i think the, the, worst, the, the worst the yeah. worst i've done is shorts it was an early morning breakfast show i was late so i was in shorts shirt i didn't brush <laughs> well, your so, listeners didn't need to. No, they don't need to know. They don't need but to I know. felt sorry for who was taking over the shift because the, the mic no. was, it was, it was funky, funky, isn't it? It was funky. Pungent, <laughs> you know. Okay, on that note, I'm going to talk brushed, about that. I brushed this morning, so we're good. <laughs> um, but but that's that's radio for me. Uh, media somebody basically means uh, I'm into everything and anything media. Okay. Entrepreneurship is actually what I. Uh, that's where my heart is. Okay. Um, so what what do you have your hands in right now? Um, I, I have about? a little media company, Amber Eleven media where i target small medium businesses so amber uh, 11 yeah amber 11 so what happened to ruby well, why time, did ruby get it this is a good one as I, i'm going to register ruby um, amber is uh, <laughs> well amber and ruby are uh, oscar's what? children yeah. yeah so yes Twins. they are my children no oh, mine yes okay Not <laughs> just, so just please checking. register i will register ruby productions Thank but you. as at the time um, my wife and i uh, had the company mm-hmm. you know we we're praying for you know fruit of the womb Sorry. and all that so it was just like oh. one child and then I went for a church service, and you know that whole double double song was was, being was everything playing double loud. Double, so and that's really how we came up. <laughs> yeah, and I sang it really hard. <laughs> so it happened. But, Do, but does it, any of you have a history of twins? Okay. Yeah, my my aunt, uh, distant. My aunt has. She's she's a twin. Um, she also gave birth to a set of twins at my cousins. Wow. On Titi's side, I think she has a uh, cousin. Like so third okay, that makes sense. It was, was somewhere there. Yeah. But the secret is the yam. Right. Who has where's been, who has been where, where's the yam going to be from? I'm, I'm from Ondo. Uh, that's oh, Akure. Okay. And in our place, yes. in our state, there are lots we of eat. twins. In fact, yeah. it's been scientifically proven that they they the have a high there. yeah high yeah. density. I think eight in every ten families have is, twins. Is that the same? Is Akure the same place where they said that there's a um um uh this is. Uh, uh, shrine? Not shrine? No, not no, the not shrine. shrine. It's no, like this no. place where people can go and um, kind of dip. Oh, the, the, the it's it's. I think it's on the way to. Um, if I'm if I'm it's like correct, a creek or pre- something where you yeah, can where go you, and you swim. Wash. If you're you, ill, you yeah, yeah, and I've, apparently you're bound to get twins. The moment oh, you that, no, shack I didn't go after that, yeah. <laughs> then no. you're bound to get yourself some <laughs> twins. I I did it. Mine was just. Uh, I think yeah. science positioning. And yeah. Okay, I'll take away the positioning part. But science and just basically, um, and and I feel like yam, will, yam, uh, yam should be really expensive. Because yam, if, is, if, if that is the reason yam why yam with twins, people are now saying you're saying bolts with with yam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why Jamaicans are fat. <laughs> and yam, that means yam should. Yam is just there chilling. Yeah, just like, like, I should oh, be getting some royalty me, on this. Respect me. And I've my done it a lot. But yeah. there, there's actually been a higher. I don't know whether it's just me, but um, on a on a lighter note, the mm-hmm. reason twins has been. I mean, I had a friend who had a set of three. I had another oh. friend who had a set of two. Uh, like in the last three or four months, I've just had like twins, triplets, yeah. twins. So I don't know whether it's the diet or what we eat, but there's, <laughs> there's been a with me. I want. You just want to get on your way there now. Blaze me. Yeah. But be careful two, what you. Be careful. Oh I only wanted one. I got two. You just want two. You might get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all for the day show. Those guys really, really. But um, but that that's basically it. And then from there, it's been media and um, everything and anything media. It's mm-hmm. it's it's what I love doing. I want to put you on the spot a bit. On um, the spot, the program yes. or question. Um, you're already on the spot. So on the hot on the hotter spot. Hey, let's switch to pigeon. Yeah. Um, mm. I want to talk about OAPs now. Okay. For those not in Nigeria, that's what we call radio DJs, radio on DJs. air personalities. Um, they get a lot of flack for accents. Ah. 
Um, and a lot of radio stations actually get called out for only for, yeah. wanting to hire because hire of, yeah. people based on that. Have you experienced that? Yeah. Do you um, have, okay. when you have meet, meet, when you meet with colleagues who you do know that. do mm. that, what do you say to them? Um, well, let me put it this way. Uh, because of my position at City, I get a lot of interns, a lot of requests. And the accent thing, I try to find out your background, first of all. Oh. Um, because what happens more often than not is sometimes the people in question might not actually be forming the accents. Um, I've, had, I've had instances where I had interviews with people who lived abroad for a while. So it's actually so there. It's, it's how they speak. And then I've had those who live in like Bariga and then they come with the accent and I'm like... Dude, so when it's fake, you know. Exactly. Most no. times, when, you know. when it's fake, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I've even been accused of that because when I was um, at another radio station, um, my another second radio... One. No, the one before. The other one. Yeah. Okay, let me just say Inspiration FM. Uh -huh. um, you get a lot of people calling like, oh, you sound like Dan. I'm like, one? Uh, that's Dan Foster. I'm like, no, I just that's not good. I sound like me. But I think my own has to do with the fact that I was in in London for about four or five years. So maybe that affected me. But I, I think a number of people stress that and they get irritated by it, which is mm -hmm. why pigeon stations are always going to be number one mm. in, in Nigeria, in Lagos, because people can relate to that. If you have the accent, quote unquote, and you have good content, some people might bear with the accent. But the frustration is that there's no content yeah, and there's just, accent, yeah. so it's annoying. It's just it's hard. A whole lot of nothing. Um, it's a whole exactly. Um, I, I wouldn't go out there and say a lot of stations deliberately look out for uh, accented OAPs, but um, I've been some. I've, some do. I've been some, a victim. I was about to. I was about so to say that some actually. Yeah? yeah. Some some actually want a specific kind of kind person. of accent because they feel it gives them that international brand. Now right. I'm from a family of broadcasting. My father was in FRCN, uh, that's Radio Nigeria, for 35 years, and his generation of broadcasters, which is like the BC Latilo, the Sonny Rabos, just that, great things. They they do not compromise on the process and yeah. the process is before anybody goes on air to open the mic and say good morning Lagos you will have gone through a process so this issue of accent will have been eliminated a long time somewhere long down time. that yeah. the problem that happens is that somebody comes from wherever and, just and they know them. somebody and they have this accent or they have this huge followership on social media and they feel they have the right to be on air and when they get on air their lapses begin to be exposed sure. what's, yeah. the, so, what's the worst thing that's ever happened to you while on air worst thing um that would be my first day january 31 2005 ah, tell them <laughs> yeah you don't forget the worst things <laughs> i can tell you the time but that would be too precise <laughs> um it was the first day i went on air uh unilag fm mm -hmm. and i was scared to I just beeped that, so it just stress you <laughs> um i was really scared and i had no experience in radio but my my boss at the time believed that i could do that and i re literally remember pushing up the fader and saying this moment will either make you or mar you and it was the worst moment at that time but when i look back it's the best but at that time i was ill prepared and ill equipped Aww. and sometimes that's actually what happens now now if i didn't work on myself um, i would have been a sorry case mm -hmm. but a lot of people get that opportunity and don't work on themselves and they now become the benchmark when people listen in. And a lot of people, Nigerians generally, Lagosians, they want to be informed. Mm -hmm. Contrary to what most people believe, they want to know What's what is happening. happening and they want to know in such a way that you know what you're talking about. And that has always been my emphasis for, for most, most people I meet. Yeah. Great yeah. stuff. Okay. All right, we're going to be taking a break now. When we come back, our topic of the day will be here on the table for mm -hmm. us to watch. <laughs> See you in a moment. Welcome back, you guys are still watching The Spots here at Radisson Blue in Lagos, Nigeria and we've been joined by Oscar Oyinson, radio personality and media sombori, among many other things. Um, it's time for us to get into today's topic and we are discussing interracial marriages. That's cool. right. Yes, yeah, something huh. that's it's quite we an all interesting know. Something that we all know, know a lot about. A lot of yes. <laughs> so much about. We're so <laughs> well informed. How? Because we're yeah. leaving it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. What so. is an interracial marriage for anyone who doesn't know? Um, so I don't know. Racist I don't know. Intermarriage. Yes. Uh, racist so were you basically? You said you said you were saying you were too racist. Intermarriage. Racist. You said yeah. I was like, wait, no, no, that's not. 
so what it is. <laughs> well, right. to need definition. Yeah, so bad. it's when two people from uh, two, different two, two different races come together and get married. Um, it can be white or Latino. Can be white, it Latino, can be black, white, and black. It's not white, it's Caucasian. Co- All right. This is the correctly polite way of saying it. Correctly. Yeah. You can be yes. beige, you can be brown. Anyone. Right. So what are your <laughs> thoughts? <laughs> what are your thoughts? How many races um, are there, sir? I think when I was younger, I was probably very a little bit more hostile towards the whole interracial relationships and Why stuff. Why would you hostile? <laughs> because I, I mean, this was Did you in live my through, teens, like, MLK style under, <laughs> <laughs> in my teens when I was under twenty and so on. Like I would just think this one sold out. Not even sold out, but it's not fair. Like you're taking everything. <laughs> you're we have. taking the last thing. Taking everything we have. You're taking everything we have, and it's not fair. And you guys look happy, and like <laughs> he treats you and your nice. Your children are like really <laughs> cute. See, no, this is quite deep. <laughs> this is just like this. But bearing in mind, I, I mean, I, my first, one of the first people I ever fancied was this Caucasian guy. Uh, but you know, nothing happened. You know that classic case of I have a black friend. I'm not racist. That's what he just did. <laughs> you look to save yourself. <laughs> But now, um, I'm obviously older, more mature. Um, how's the Caucasian guy doing, by the way? How's the Caucasian? I don't know how he's doing. Go and look him up on Facebook. I would love to. Mark. <laughs> Facebook. What's I his name? Mark. Mark Zuckerberg. No. no. Unfortunately, <laughs> What were you doing? <laughs> how could you let him go? That somebody that's wrong. So yeah, now, yeah. I really, I don't care. I don't care what color it is the person is. If you guys are happy, that's fine. It doesn't um, But what I do not like is people who discredit uh, particular women or men of uh, uh, of a certain race. Mm-hmm. So you'll have a make, for example, a black guy who says, "I would never date a black woman because black women are too loud." Oh, or whatever. okay. Uh, so mm-hmm. yeah. black black yeah, women are not loud, by the but way. But is it fair to say I would so never date a black woman because I'm not attracted to them? That's okay. Okay. You don't have to be sure. But then they call it's it. It's harsh to swallow. It's harsh to swallow. They do quantify. Okay, it's a but generalization. But people who don't. And it's not, I, don't know if, I, don't, I don't know if that's a racist thing. That's why I ask. It's a preference. Because it's also, I think it's possible. Yeah. But then it's when you ask them why, this is why, that's why, because me, that I ask an extra yeah. layer of the question. Because I could say, oh, um, I would never date a, a black guy because I'm not attracted to them. Okay, why are you not attracted to them? Because they all cheat. Then, then you're like, okay. Oh, okay, or because they all are loud, or because they, you know, whatever Perfect. adjective you want to put in there, that's my extra layer. Mm. So then I'm. So you saying there's never a valid reason? To do to not, I think it's, 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 it's personal there, to you. Of course, you, there yes. are, but there is value to you, and but, but, no one's gonna force you to date. Uh, is yeah, what I'm saying. No, what day. I'm saying is, if the person says, "I don't know," I just don't fancy them. It's possible well, not to just yeah, fancy yeah, a that's, certain, that's, but not the whole thing, a type. No, I think it's possible you're not to be attracted to see. like. Not one by by. Yeah, okay, so many like I said, when I was the younger, world. there was you know this Caucasian guy who I really really wanted to date. He was the son of our schoolkeeper, um, and then now I've gotten to a point where I do find uh, men of um, certain. of certain races attractive, but the desire to then take, take it towards them. somewhere else mm-hmm. to date or getting a relationship with them isn't really there okay. i haven't found somebody that i was like a strong oh, enough reason for you a to strong enough go reason to for next. me to okay. you know explore a bit okay. further so yeah. I, I think anybody can marry anybody yeah. yeah any race but um like you rightly said i think there's always a um prejudice or uh, something must have happened that caused that notion that oh i don't want to date a white girl mm-hmm. i've always had the fancy of dating a white a white caucasian it's too late sorry. for you now so sorry yeah so, um, <laughs> <laughs> and the reason was more for um, adventure, being a young mm-hmm. guy. You just want to see what's the difference. Bucket list. You know, uh, so it's not buckets. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's a busy. But that was my own, my own preference. Now, you, you hear the stories of, oh, there are high rate of divorce and all these other excuses you have. But then you now be like, okay, when you, I know you're, I know you're black on black and there's still a high rate of divorce. So there's no, it's just a there's rate. no standards. It's not, yeah, it's but not by I, that. I, I think... <laughs> Sometimes the the beautiful things that come out of interracial also is something to emulate, which you would not get in in a, in a same same race. race. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I had a friend who who married uh, a Chinese uh, Chinese guy. Uh, sorry, girl. Whew, that was close. Uh, a guy <laughs> who married a Chinese girl, and it was it was interesting to see the the cultures merge. Uh, yeah. It was interesting to see how the kid came out. Yeah. And he's on Facebook, so he does a lot of uploads, and it was just like. It's a different type of feeling. You, I wouldn't have gotten this if I married from here. Mm-hmm. But that's his story. And yeah. Everybody's yeah. story is unique. Yeah, they're so a very beautiful story. I mean, yeah, I, mean I have an American stories. friend, Guy, who's married to a Zambian. Mm. 
and he moves to Zambia for her. Wow. And they have a son now. And his life is just completely different. gone, like, completely different. Yeah. I mean, from Michigan to Harare, to, I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> not to Harare, Lusaka. I'm just like, how did you do it? And he's been there for four years now, you know? And you see those stories and it's something that would never have happened if he didn't if, meet her, maybe when and, she came and, for college. And I think it also something. has to do with the individual. If you have this uh, curious, adventurous spirit, um, if you have the time to, mm. most people want to venture out of the comfort zone, the norm, it's, you know. It's a beautiful thing. Like you were talking about the culture. And what I love is when you see two different people from, um, you know, their, their own individual cultures and they come together and you just see how they both like embrace mm that e each, other's each other's background so you might have one learning a language and you know the other trying to learn how to maybe cook a goosey soup or something like that <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a beautiful thing yeah it um, is a beautiful thing uh we're gonna go on a break and when we come back we'll talk about more beautiful things about interracial marriages and also and of course as well some of the the stereotypes and and maybe biases associated with right. it as well so please stay tuned and chip in on social media we'll be right back Welcome back. You're still watching the sports, and we're hanging out here with Oscar in the house, and we're talking into racial marriages. And um, yeah, I wanted to go back to <laughs> I wanted to go back to the, what we we're talking about earlier about preferences, and I think my question is more with regards to I was asking about is it always racial when you're saying you don't prefer like a certain, certain thing? And you know, you hear people always ask, "So what is your type?" Right. You know. And you say, well, I like tall guys. Nobody really asks why. Why is there always okay. a why with race? The why before the why. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I like chubby guys. Why? You do? No, I'm just saying people say oh, because that. Because there's more than love. Okay, sorry. Um. Nobody really asks, <laughs> oh, I like tall, dark, and handsome. You know what I like yeah. you why? Mm. But if you just say, oh, I don't really like white people. Well, oh, I like a black guy. Then it's like, yeah. I think you know what I mean? Everybody's decision, if you do dig deeper, it's always influenced by something, yeah. somewhere, environment. Yeah. Um, Even with it all that, maybe we just well, that. also so racially you. sensitive. So anything, the moment you mention a color or a type, like it makes you want to, to ask that question and want to know. Okay, wait, are you being? You but know, I'm, I'm thinking. I think it's opposite. I'm thinking yeah, it's opposite. Yeah. Yes. Only if it's like nobody would question me if I say. I don't I like black, black guys. guys. It's only if I said, well, my type is white guys. Then you'd be like, ah. But if I said my type <laughs> is black guys, nobody would be like, well, that's wrong. You should like everybody. But if I said, no, it's true. What? But if I said, oh, I only date Latinos. And that's Then it. they would be like, have, have you? Okay, so you said you've never dated out. Yeah, I've no. I don't and I would I've never. never dated out of my race. When, when you, you say two. dated, what what exactly going on a date have, been in a relationship? have you Anything. have you been in a relationship have you been on a date have you kissed have you messed around with uh, 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 are you asking me you you you're you, doing you, a lot right you now said I, I said ask. give me a definition of what you're saying so have I you done was. any of those things with somebody outside of your race yes yes auntie no. Well, explain yourself to the viewers. I don't well, need to. Wait, I don't no, need no, to. No, 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 that. Because you've not Even done it. No, no, have you lost out on anything if you haven't done it? Outside the race. Well, oh, I mean, I you might have so. missed I, I had out a friend in. I had a friend in university, and she's always, like, from one guy to another, I'm like, hey. babe, now white man, you go marry. See, it was a joke, and she eventually... Now, my point to me is that why did I think a that white was, guy was, was a going prefer, to be fitting? And in retrospect, she actually ended up marrying a white guy mm -hmm. from... I think Australia or something, mm -hmm. okay. a Caucasian, sorry. And then the, the reason for me then was they would not give her as much stress. They would understand her, yeah. blah, 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 that blah, thing. blah. Yeah. So I've there's that. I've gotten that. About a friend of Caucasian. mine actually said that. She go, he, he said, I feel like you're going to end up marrying stuff. You're not going to marry like a Nigerian. Like you, you're you going to marry like a like an African-American. If that's a boy, I, really feel like, I, think a, I, think, <laughs> I think a white man will fit you. I said, I don't know but if that's why? supposed to be an insult or right. what, like... What is it supposed to? What does it I mean? I think it just meant that they would. It's, and, it's, it's and a reflection of what they think your character is, is about. Like that, yeah, but exactly. I was like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be offended. I this, this well, I was, I was, in my case, I was right, and this was like <laughs> six years apart. So what does that mean? Oh gosh! I think what with the Caucasian one, mm -hmm. when people say now you both fit you is more when they think you're too complex. Right. To understand. So, so when they're Nigerian so guys can do it. Because Nigerian guys are stupid. You can look at it that way. Because 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 they can look at it that way, but that's what most people think. Like, ah, this one I beg, our ally is too much. Maybe you understand. Mm -hmm. Now you both go fit some more. 
you know, things mm -hmm. like that. Because mm -hmm. you are a little too eccentric or you like the things that are not usual. But, but yeah. unfortunately, yeah. when you say something like that, the reverse implication is that black guys or Nigerian guys cannot understand you. Yeah. Which is I'm not, not the, that's, that's not the thing, intention. Is, it's not the intention. Yeah, it's just it's the, like, it's, it's if, well, that's what the perception would be eventually. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. I think, I mean, if I, if I ask you, would you date a Chinese guy? What would you say? If the Chinese if guy, I was attracted if I like, that's sure. the thing, like if I, I, when, when he was saying something about, when you ask what's your type, my type, when I say my type, I don't have a physical type or it, like I have a type in terms mm -hmm. of, every, almost everyone I've dated have maybe similar, similar personality in a sense, like they all are maybe funny or they're all like a certain way, mm -hmm. but they don't look alike. You see what I'm saying? Like so I was a Chinese type. <laughs> Isn't that physical type? You say type? you have a physical type? No. Girl, you tell well, us, you want like no, 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 in fact, you yes. want like no, no, I'm just, professor. Would you, you would like, you that like them again? big and or? Well, I've dated somebody who was like like linebacker, like like no, not that linebacker. one, naughty professor, like, like, like oh, naughty professor. Yeah, I'm not attracted like, to somebody who's morbidly obese. No. Oh. <laughs> you just said naughty professor. He's morbidly obese. I'm not attracted to a morbidly obese person. I'm I'm not sorry. Oh, that's not race. That's just size. She said she's not size. Body shaming. Okay, so it's a woman. Yes, I Woman that's not a professor size. Would you date her? I'm not. I need. I have physical preferences. Yeah, the way you are saying that. You do have physical preferences. No, I'm saying. No, I'm saying. You said what's your type? Okay. I was saying. Well, I was trying to explain. So would I date a Chinese person? I'm saying. In sense of like a physical type, I don't have a. Oh, they all have to be six foot five. Da, 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 da. Like, from from experience, I I always I mean I always used to think mm -hmm. when I was dating, Before. back to back to back to back. Okay. Back to um, back. Everything was eight. It wasn't eight. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't always eight. But I, I usually tell okay. some of my younger guys that the more you date, the more you get a picture of who you want to end up with. Mm -hmm. It right. helps. Mm -hmm. um, but the flip side of that is when you date two, three, four, five, six girls, and then you feel you know you what you this want. Like. <laughs> and then you're not like, maybe this is not actually what I wanted at the end of the day. Oh, it, it could get confusing. Yeah. But the, the bottom line is just take the plunge. You you go go with your gut mm -hmm. and see swim how it goes. Swim around in the pool. And just take nah, a not swim in the pool. No. Plunge. That's a bit. Just take, take a plunge. That's your take away from this. Take a plunge. Take 2016. Whether it's Caucasian, Indian, Chinese, just take a plunge. Trust me, okay. nothing is truer than that. Okay. Take a plunge. Um, All right. Let's talk about show. the <laughs> and plunge safely. Um, wow. When we. I think in the toilet. When we. <laughs> I'm when we went for the like last break, <laughs> I said we should talk about some of the negative things that are associated with interracial relationships or interracial marriages. But mm. I'm gonna have to hold you okay. right there. So we're gonna have to uh, think um, about some of the negatives while we're on a break. We'll see you guys in just a bit. Hello there, welcome back to The Spot and today we are talking about interracial marriages. Please do join us on Facebook, Twitter and also via email with some of your comments. Before we left, Lamy Day made a point about um, us talking about the negative, um, the negative thoughts associated with interracial relationships. Yeah. After um, the plunge. After you take the plunge <laughs> into the wow. cold pool. Oh, wow. um, yeah, so... I often see online, in, in real life, I've had people say things, you know, that I just, or observations that I've made as well, just seeing that in general, when we see, especially here, I will say like in, I, I've seen it elsewhere, but in Nigeria, you usually get a lot of negative, um, if you're mostly, a lot of times is if you're the woman dating um, outside of your race here, there's this sort of stereotype that you're a runs girl or you're a prostitute oh. or things like that. So you get that, there's, there's quite a lot of that. In general, though, I think there is like a wider issue, mm -hmm. okay. you know, because in the States, for example, you see a lot of people talk about that, whole, oh, you know, black people dating white people, why can't you date within your race, oh, mm -hmm. especially uh, you're selling out, all that kind of stuff. So there's that aspect of it, and then there's the aspect of it here where it becomes a, you're a prostitute and you're only doing it because you want maybe the person to marry you for their passport, for their visa, or whatever, for whatever. Is that when you post all those pictures in front of the registry? Yes. <laughs> I've seen, registry, yeah, registry yeah. Pictures. Yeah, yeah. So um, what do you... I don't know if I can think of any other negatives aside from that. Um, you do get a lot of people who just stare um, when they see, you know, an interracial couple walking up and down. Um, you you get told that you're a sellout and you don't love your own people, and you know how can you communicate and relate mm -hmm. culturally with this person? Mm -hmm. 
And that starts to target your relationship because, yeah. you know, you're, you're fine. You and your partner are happy with whatever boundaries agreed, or yeah. whatever it is that you guys have agreed on. And then you, you come somewhere and you get told that she needs to act in this particular way. She, if, mm. you know, if she's Caucasian, then she needs to kind of act, act black, black or mm. act Nigerian or yeah. whatever in order to please everybody. So. The, 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 the issues are, I mean, when you look at any marriage there's always a compromise um, especially when it's outside the couple so you're looking at siblings you're looking at family mm. and I think that's where all the issues um, usually come might, might come from right. so you, you find a guy who is maybe he met the girl in the US and they're cool then he comes back home and maybe she's Korean he's Nigerian mm. and the families are like you know they didn't have time to know the girl so mm -hmm. there's already oh, a barrier set okay. they didn't have time to merge and let the cult you know so yeah. all these things now build up and is in post marriage if the marriage doesn't work you know because like, ah, she was korean now yeah. how would you, you know so yeah. all these things now come up after yeah. but while they're in the relationship or in the marriage everybody's just sitting and looking and just waiting for the bomb to go off mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if it doesn't go off they'll be like oh they did well but if it does then, then the prejudices say, yeah, yeah come so come I, I think out. that's that's where so it's up to the the, the couple to actually make it work mm -hmm. irrespective of the, the negatives. Surrounding. Oh, but but it's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah. Even for those that are black on black, Nigerian on Nigerian, <laughs> any marriage, any relationship, it's, yeah. it's never easy. It's never easy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. I'm just... I, I, I think any marriage is hard work, like he says. Um, and um, if you're going to go into one as complex as an interracial one, mm -hmm. I want to believe you didn't just... Wake up one morning. Wake up one morning and say, oh, I'm going to marry an Asian. <laughs> and then you just find one the next day without knowing what you're getting yourself into. But can you ever really know what you're getting into? Yeah, but into? If, if you're dating someone from outside of your culture, first of, yeah. all, first of all, while dating, you already know that things are different. Yeah. So it's even more complex when it's someone completely from Out a different of. race and, you know, the culture is different, your learning experiences are different, your environment, everything is new. So why you're dating, I want to believe that at least you have an idea that, okay, this is going to take some work mm -hmm. and then going into it like he says you have to be prepared for the work because mm -hmm. it's almost a lifetime of work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's almost a lifetime of work so yeah. all right well let's switch things up just a uh just a little bit we have some friday foods coming your way this is where our chef uzo takes you know the kitchen seriously and starts to throw around <laughs> and tormentos yes <laughs> so let's check out what uzo has for us today hi everyone and welcome to friday food with uzo from my food lab I'm going to be showing you how to mix a very basic house spice that you can use with anything from your fried rice to spicing up your basic stews to um, seasoning your meats. And all you need are four basic ingredients. And I advise you to use a 2-1-1 ratio. In this case, I have two parts of ground ginger, one part of garlic powder, one part of paprika, and one part of your basic salt. Add ingredient two and ingredient three and it is that simple mix together till everything is nicely combined and transfer it into a jar of your choice so just carefully spoon typically dried spices will stay um, potent for about six months to a year if properly covered and if you don't allow any moisture to go in I know some people add grains of rice into their spices it prevents it from um, clumping together here you have it your own house blend and in order to avoid confusion as well feel free to make a label and include the date that you mixed it and the ingredients perhaps so that maybe next time you can try another part of another ingredient just so you have a little bit of a flavor profile in your spice cabinet there you have it your own house blended spice to give a little chefy touch to all your meals over the weekend until the next time i come your way again have a wonderful spicy weekend okay well thank you uzo for making my stomach rumble mm -hmm. i appreciate it do you guys have any favorite interracial couples I, I don't know if okay who's yours here yeah. um uh, tamara housley oh and yeah Annie. they're such a cute yeah couple. yeah that's yeah that's a good one mm -hmm. they have really a very sweet relationship yeah. and i watched um the tia oh, in case people don't know tia and tamara the african-american twins who were actresses well they're, they're still actresses they're but they still. had a what was it sister sister, sister, sister. sister. I had a crush on them actually. Oh, you did? They're very beautiful. So I, I watched their reality show and so I saw them interact and that's when I kind of really just 
fell in got love. To, yeah, I remember I like when them, she really. would say that she would get like really horrible messages yeah. from people about her relationship and it was just nasty. And, mm -hmm. and there needs to be a level of determination. Uh, yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't know whether education has a role to play as well because we are here. There's, I mean, there's a level of education we have so we can rationalize things. But there's yeah. some people that I just they just it. don't see it that way, yeah. you know, and they just throw the baby and the bat with her out and like, this won't work. So I don't know if I have any favorite interracial I think what I've always found interesting okay. with the offspring of inter interracial marriages is... They're good for pics. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Let's go on a break. Let's go on a <laughs> break. Our breath We're going to find out what the cliffhanger to that sentence is when we come back. Please stay with us. Welcome back, you're still watching The Spot. And as it's a Friday, you guys, we have our special segment called Chase for the Phantom. And that's where one lucky spotter every Friday gets a chance to win a goodie bag from Techno simply by answering a question on any of our social media platforms. Today's question is, what was the first Nigerian or African song to be played on MTV Bass? So go ahead and answer and respond using the hashtag Chase for the Phantom. Good luck, Zainab, you are not eligible to win. I know the answer. Sorry for you. <laughs> All right, so before the break, we had a cliffhanger. Uncle, finish. It's not such a cliffhanger anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the cliff has drifted away. Okay. Now, I was just going to say that I just find it interesting that with um, biracial kids, yeah, right. um, especially oh. if one of the parents is black, mm. the child is always called black. Yeah. Why always. is that? Yeah. Hmm. It's, ah. a, it's a generation long, like, I don't know. You have why. one drop of black blood. Tiger in Woods is half Asian, yes. half black. He's black. Obama is half white, half black. He's I black. think they just take the race of the dad. Of the father. No, no. It's, no. They don't? Whoever no. it is. No. Well, in America, is it it's, it's a prejudice I think it's your, think it's your mom, mom who's black. Tia yeah. and Tamara. Their dad is like... No, he was, no, it was... Uh, sorry, they lived in Germany. He's not German. But yeah, his, his, their dad is... Well, they just, they just is swung yeah. with the whole... But once you have... Once black one parent is black, you are black. black I don't know why. Yeah. Like, is it because of for slavery? America, or? Yes. For America... No, if you had one drop of black blood... Then you're black. Then you were black. You were considered black. They, that's why they had things like the paper bag test, like, yeah, I mean, it's a generations long thing. I don't Once know. Once you're a yellow. <laughs> this travel guy, for example. You can be 100% black with your yellow. Yeah, you're yellow. <laughs> Come on, buy market. I, I thought you were going to raise the issue about the, um, the confusion Sorry. argument that, you know, a lot of biracial. What am I? Yeah, what am I? Where do, Where I, do I, I belong? Yeah. I think that's a valid argument. I mean, I've not lived the experience, but so I don't yeah, know. It's a bit of a struggle. Like, Especially when there are like three on races inside you. Accept, it depends on whether, and it depends on whether or not you've been accepted by all these different, different aspects of yourself. Yeah. You understand what I mean? And how your family has been brought up. Like if your parent is Asian, for example, and your dad is Nigerian, and your mom speaks whatever language, let's say she's Chinese, and she speaks Chinese to you and you understand it, and your dad speaks Igbo or Yoruba to you and you understand it, and both sets of grandparents are involved in your life, I don't think you have that struggle per se. Mm. You, you understand the different parts of your culture. But do you, but must, you, you must you belong to one in particular? That's the question. I don't think no. so. I think you, everybody think makes up their own rules. I'm a big proponent of every family. I think every the belonging is a little more rules. for the growing up years. Okay. So okay. you have a lot of people Puberty, say, oh, when I was yeah. in school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or when I was blah, blah, blah. I never really knew Words. who to hang with. Words. Oh, or I see. I was teased by both these groups. Okay, because you know? I wasn't And you don't belong yeah. here. You don't belong here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of biracial kids, especially in America, say that. Mm -hmm. Where the black kids are teasing you and the white kids are teasing you. Like, okay, so where am I? Mm -hmm. I guess you we, we can't even relate. So we can't <laughs> exactly relate. They only point. tease you because, I don't know, maybe your forehead is... Big. Oh, your nose is your white. nose is big. Yeah, yeah, okay, can we switch on the nose thing? <laughs> 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 I'm I'm jabs, sorry, I have had jabs on the nose. Sorry, yeah. got it. I'm with my champion, yes. I'm, I'm good. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it is time for us to go. Thank you so much for being with us, Oscar. Real uh, pleasure. Thanks a lot for having me, guys. You're welcome. Uh, guys at home. Do you ever want to host the Oscars one day? Ah, no, I'm no. actually <laughs> eager. Hashtag all I saw. It's not remotely funny. Um, no, no, no. Bye for now, guys. Uh, don't forget either, to check out our Techno Phantom um, competition online, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Picture time, selfie time.